In this video we're going to uh, go over the steps of drawing a Mohr circle and then use the information on the Mohr circle to find our principal stresses and the maximum shear stress for a state of plane stress. So by definition a plane stress uh, state can have up to three independent uh, stresses, two normal stresses, sigma x and sigma y, and one component of shear stress, tau xy. Now we're going to take these stresses and plot them on a set of axes with the normal stress being on the horizontal and the shear stress being on the vertical. I tend to plot the uh, uh, shear stress as positive downward. Uh, we'll see why in a few moments. Uh, some texts actually uh, plot it upward and we'll see what the difference is when we get, uh, get to the end. It won't make any difference as far as uh, calculation of the uh, principal stresses. Well, to create the Mohr circle, we plot two points. The first point being our value of sigma x on the sigma axis and our shear stress on the tau axis. So that's point one. The second point will be sigma y and minus tau xy. So once we've got these two points plotted, we connect them with a straight line. And where they intersect the uh, uh, sigma axis, That'll be our average normal stress, which we'll designate sigma average. The Mohr circle then is going to be centered at that point sigma average and will pass through our points 1 and 2. Now from the circle, we can uh, see that the maximum principal stress, excuse me, the maximum normal stress that we can have is going to be as uh, designated by sigma A here. In other words, as far out on the normal axis as you can get and the minimum in-plane principal stress, which we'll call sigma b, is going to be uh, over on the left. And so we can see relative to sigma average that if we add the radius of the circle, that'll take us out to sigma a, and if we subtract the radius of the circle, that'll give us sigma b. So to calculate the radius of the circle, we can isolate this triangle and the radius of the circle is the hypotenuse of this triangle, of this right triangle. The first side is going to be half of the difference between sigma x and sigma y. The other side is going to be the shear stress tau xy. So the radius is going to be the square root of the other two of the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So what we've done graphically is reason out what the equations are for our two in-plane principal stresses, sigma a and sigma b. I like drawing the more circle because the equations kind of fall out. They're easy to, um, to generate as opposed to trying to memorize uh, the equation. Now, the reason I said that I like to plot uh, the shear stress being down is because you may want to know at what orientation does the, uh, are the axes such that uh, the principal stresses are present. If you plot with tau down, then your rotation from the x-axis to the first principal axis are, is in the same direction uh, as a positive rotation about the z-axis. In other words, if I could calculate the angle that's shown there on the Mohr circle, then that's equal to twice the angle that you rotate uh, the axes to show the principal stresses. Uh, the reason it's doubled is because those are uh, double angle formulas that are used to generate the, uh, the Mohr circle, which makes sense. If you look at uh, point 1 and point 2, they represent sigma x and sigma y, which of course are 90 degrees apart, but on the circle they'll end up being 180 degrees apart. And if you rotate the element to 180 degrees, you really are back where you started from, so that would be a full 360 degree rotation on the Mohr circle. And of course you can calculate then, uh, based on knowing what the sides of that triangle are, you can calculate what that angle is. Now most of the time that's, that's not really of interest to us, but what we do want to know is uh, again what the values are of sigma A and of sigma B. And also, uh, in particular when we're, we're trying to analyze failure with the maximum shear stress uh, criterion, we'll want to know what the maximum shear stress is as well. Now the maximum shear stress is not necessarily the uh, radius of our Mohr circle. That would give us the maximum 
in plane shear stress. But if we uh, take a look at our, um, our little block of material here, recognizing that uh, by definition the principal stresses are uh, for orientations for which the shear stresses are equal to zero, well, because there are no out of plane uh, shear stresses, the uh, out of plane normal stress, sigma z, or in this case we've labeled it as sigma z, sigma c rather, uh, even though it's equal to zero, that is also a principal stress. So our three principal stresses are the two that we find from the Mohr circle and the third one, which is equal to zero. Now what that Mohr circle that we drew represents is, as we said earlier, it's the, all the stress states that are possible for a rotation about the z-axis or for a rotation about the c-axis, if we want to think about it that way. But we can also create two other Mohr circles one of them by looking at the rotation about the a-axis and so we can see if we were to plot our, our points then uh, sigma b and sigma c would be our normal stresses there are no shear stresses so our little circle would be as shown here and we can also rotate this block of material about the b-axis in which case our extreme values of normal stress would be sigma a and sigma z c rather and so we can plot all three of those on the same axes, and sometimes that's called a 3D Mohr circle, although we have to remember it's for, three, uh, it's for 3D rotations, but it still is only good for a state of plane stress. But what it shows is, because the maximum shear stress being the, the radius of the largest circle, the maximum shear stress, even for a state of plane stress, the maximum shear stress may occur um, not in that plane. And so to find the maximum shear stress, and all we have to do is find the radius of the larger circle, but there's actually three cases of that. The first case, we draw our Mohr circle, sigma a and sigma b are both positive, which means, of course, sigma c being the zero one is going to be the smallest one. And so the largest circle, as you can see, turns out to be sigma a divided by two, the radius. If sigma a and sigma b are both negative, then sigma c becomes our, our largest of our principal stresses. And we can see that the maximum shear stress ends up being minus sigma b over 2, sigma b being negative, so we do get a, still get a positive value for tau max. In the third case, if sigma a is positive and sigma b is negative, then the uh, radius of the largest circle is as shown here. But there is an easier way or a better way than having to look at which case you have and that is once you find those three principal stresses two of them from the Mohr circle and the third one being equal to zero rename them sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 sigma 1 should always be the largest and sigma 3 the smallest if you do that then the maximum shear stress is always going to be the difference between the large and the small divided by two so in summary Drawing a Mohr circle, I think, gives a lot of uh, insight and, and helps you visualize a stress state more than just plugging into the equations. But the equations do drop out of that, and so rather than memorizing the equations, you can develop them from the Mohr circle very easily. The steps, um, once you find those Mohr circle, once you find them, excuse me, draw the Mohr circle, you end up finding the two in-plane principal stresses. Remember, the third one is equal to zero rename them such that sigma 1 is the largest and sigma 3 is the smallest. There will be of course cases where two of them are identical but as long as you keep this order it's okay and your maximum shear stress will always be half of sigma 1 minus sigma 3. And again the reason we're doing this is that the principal stresses and the maximum shear stress are important depending on which failure criteria that we look at but they are uh, important to being able to determine uh, failure.